Welcome to Trail Recon. Previously on our Utah to Colorado adventure, I brought you with us as we prepared for the trip and then drove nonstop from Southern California all the way to Moab, Utah. I then introduced you to the crew and we set off to tackle the Top of the World Trail. It was a great start to an awesome week long adventure and there is so much more to come. morning guys what a wonderful day yesterday doing top of the world trail and then hitting that onion creek trail that trail was easy but it was so beautiful now we got here to the sand flats recreational area i'm here with marco and we set up camp late last night got some chow and just hit the hay man we were really tired but this morning man we've got a beautiful sunrise here we're going to be meeting up with the guys here in just a couple hours and we're going to go hit hell's revenge this should be another epic day what an awesome adventure so far. The trailhead to Hell's Revenge is located in the Sand Flats Recreation Area on the northeast side of Moab. There is a small fee to enter the recreation area, but there is almost 30 miles of 4x4 trails here to explore and several campsites. Brad, if you just see the arrows on the ground, just keep the arrows in the middle of your Jeep. Copy that. This looks like super radical and it's really just very simple. The first section of Hell's Revenge starts off with a taste of what's to come. A steep and narrow slick rock climb and descent. Hell's Revenge is rated as a difficult trail as there are many challenging obstacles along the way, but thankfully most of them have bypasses. However, Navigating the trail's slick rock, steep climbs and descents and sharp turns and narrow sections require a good tire placement and your full driver skills attention. Now, let's go have some fun. At one of the first overlooks you encounter, there is a replica of an old dinosaur track. Unfortunately, the original was stolen a few years ago. You can also get a good look of the famous Lion's Back, which is no longer open to 4x4 traffic. It doesn't look so big from up here, but I can tell you when you are at the base, it's pretty intimidating. Hell's Revenge is a very popular trail and we did come across many other off-roaders, motorcycles, side-by-sides, and plenty of tour vehicles along the way. Just be courteous, there's plenty of passing room for everybody. And this is also a great time to talk about the grippiness of the slick rock in Moab I had heard so much about. It's not really until you get here and you're on these steep ascents and descents that you really can appreciate it. One thing I'll mention is that when you are cresting some of these climbs, it's a little unnerving not being able to see what's on the other side. So having a forward facing camera in a situation like this would be really helpful. Top of this hill, you're gonna see two lines on the road. Put your Jeep right in between those two lines when you go down the hill, the back side. <laughs>
same thing on top of this little mound. There's two lines to line up with. One of the things that I really enjoyed about this trail is while you do spend quite a bit of time on the slick rock going up and down the descents, every so often you turn a corner and you hit the sand and some loose rocky climbs. It really helps to keep things interesting along the way. Here is the offshoot to Hell's Gate. And if you keep going, you're not committed to doing Hell's Gate just yet. This just takes you to the beginning of the Hell's Gate loop. And it's actually a great place if you wanna pull off and watch others climb. Sizing up Hell's Gate and evaluating the line is something we all gave some serious consideration to. This is not a climb for the inexperienced driver and making sure your tire placement is perfect is critical on this optional section. Alright guys, we have had a great time here on Hell's Revenge, but now we are at 
Hell's Gate, which is behind me. And we've all kind of been discussing about whether or not we were gonna do this. And the big thing for me and Marco specifically is we've got our rooftop tents. We've got all that weight in the back and it's just not advisable to take that climb with that off camber on the V-notch with all that weight in the rear. We could maybe do it, but it's not worth the risk. We've got a long week ahead of us, but our good buddy Joe, he's getting ready to tackle it. So we're gonna follow him with the camera guys. Now I handed off one of my cameras to Joe's son so he could capture the descent into the base of Hell's Gate and the climb from inside the Jeep. And just the first part of the loop to drop into Hell's Gate is a pretty good challenge by itself. You're pretty much committed at this point, so keep that in mind as you're going to do this. When you get to this point, it's a little common to do just a little bit of a Jeep wave, but Joe's line just didn't look right to Rusty who was doing the spotting. Both Rusty and Joe took a good moment to really assess the risk here, and they ultimately made the call to just be on the safe side and strap a line to the Jeep. Were we being overly cautious? You bet. But one thing we've learned over the years is that if you're in a situation where you are questioning whether you may be in a bad spot or a good spot, it's usually best to err on the safe side. We still had a long week ahead of us and the last thing we wanted to do was have to end anyone's trip. Live to fight another day. I was really second guessing my decision at the time whether or not to do Hell's Gate, but now having watched this back several times, not doing the Hell's Gate was the right decision that day. I'll be back another time soon without the rooftop tent and a week's worth of camping gear. Hell's Gate's still on my bucket list. Little tire squeak there. Hey guys, we just uh, left the Hell's Gate section and you don't need to do Hell's Gate. It's actually an up and back and there's a little roundabout there. You can turn around, it's easy. So we're heading back to Hell's Revenge. We're actually looking for a shady spot to eat some lunch. But man, this has just been a spectacular trail. All these ups and downs and the grippiness of the tire. What do you think, man? This has been cool, huh? Oh yeah, I like this one. It's definitely different than yesterday. Oh, it's totally different than yesterday. And you've been driving most of it. Man, your experience level has gone through the roof on this trail. It's been very cool, guys. So we're gonna grab some lunch and there is a lot more trail to come. It was over 100 degrees outside on the trail, but none of us were complaining. This had been an awesome day so far. It was nice to take a break and stop for lunch. And you know, you always gotta check in and see what Marco is conjuring up. I honestly don't know anyone that eats as good as Marco when they're out on the trail jeeping. Marco, what's for lunch, buddy? Uh, sandwiches. Fake meat, of course. Is that tofurkey? Yes, sir.
There are a few other optional challenges along Hell's Gate if your driving skills and vehicle are up for it. There is this tip over challenge, which I'm gonna say the name speaks for itself and I'm gonna avoid it on this trip. There are also the very famous hot tubs and if you look close, there's plenty of loose bolts and parts uh, on the bottom of these. And there's also the famous escalator. And while all these obstacles gave us some pause for consideration, we decided we would have our fun tomorrow on the obstacles Poison Spider was going to throw at us. Guys, we had an epic time on Hell's Revenge. What an awesome trail. You know, so different than what we did at Top of the World yesterday. It was a blast. It's definitely one you guys need to put on your bucket list. Now, a couple of us are gonna go play around on fins and things and do a couple other things. We're actually not gonna film any of those because we're not really sure that we're even gonna do an entire trail. But then Marco and I have got to go find a place to camp tonight. So I'll see you guys back at camp. The Fins and Things Trail is located in the Sand Flats Recreation Area, and while it's a much shorter and easier trail, we probably had just as much fun on this trail as we did Hell's Revenge. I'll have to come back again and do a little more filming. It's a must-do trail if you have time while you are here. There is a lot more to come on our Utah to Colorado off-road adventure. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please remember to travel the trails responsibly. And if you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. You won't want to miss the rest of this awesome adventure. Thanks for watching.